Hi, everyone. My name is Jun Park. I'm a PhD student in the computer science department at Stanford. And today I will discuss my work with my collaborator, Joseph Searing and advisor, Michael Bernstein. Online communities host antisocial behaviors, ranging from misogyny to personal attacks and to other offensive and inflammatory comments. And the fact that they do, unfortunately, is no longer controversial. And in response, both our academic and industry communities tried hard in the past few years to deploy various moderation strategies. So given this, the question I want to ask today is actually quite simple and singular. Given the design and moderation strategies, what's the state of these communities today? How widespread is antisocial behavior online? More precisely, how much of the content that is getting posted is antisocial, which in our study, we define as behaviors that violate the community's own rules. And how much of it do we actually moderate? The context of focus in our study is Reddit, which is one of the most popular social platforms in the United States. We focus in particular on the 97 most popular subreddit communities. And what we measure in these communities is the prevalence of comments that violate one or more of Reddit's own eight macro norms that include categories such as misogyny, inflammatory political comments, and personal attacks. These macro norms are derived in prior work by conducting topic extraction on the comments that were removed due to moderation in these communities, which is to say, these are the categories of comments that the moderators of our study subreddits actually try to moderate. And here's what we find. One in every 20 comments that are posted to these communities violate at least one macro norm. And almost none are moderated. Let's take a moment here. If you remember one slide from this talk, this is it. What this means is, if you load one page of an average conversation thread on Reddit, you're likely to see at least one comment that violates Reddit's own macro norms. So for the remainder of this talk, I want to discuss three things. First, our measurement procedure in this study for the prevalence of macro norm violations, which involves three components, human reviewers, AI classifiers, and statistical bootstrapping. Second, a further breakdown of our findings. And finally, design implications. There are a lot of unaccounted antisocial behaviors out there. So what do we do? Where do we go from here? So first, how do we measure the prevalence of macro norm violations? We looked at all comments that were ever posted on our 97 study subreddits during the 11 months from May 2016 to March 2017 and then as a replication study to these to see if the same patterns arose more recently, the three weeks from December 2020 to January 2021. And importantly, the data set we used for our analysis included comments that were moderated and unmoderated. So we had a full picture of what was and was not getting removed. But here is a problem. If you want to conduct a measurement study like what we're doing here, identifying and measuring the prevalence of norm violations, 350 million comments is a lot of content. And that means the naive approaches for identifying norm violations fail. For instance, asking human annotators to look at 350 million comments is intractable. But even the state-of-the-art ML classifiers cannot accurately classify nuanced categories that many of the macro norms represent. So here's what we did. We built a human and AI pipeline where we had ensemble ML classifiers composed of 97 neural net classifiers, where each of them represented a particular subreddit's moderation norms to flag potentially violating comments and trained human annotators to verify whether those flagged comments are actually violating a macro norm. And if they are, which of the eight macro norms they are actually violating. We deployed this human and AI pipeline to measure the prevalence of macro norm violations. We started from randomly sampling comments from our 97 study subreddits, and then flagging the potentially violating comments with the ML classifiers. 
and then human annotating a sample of the flagged and non-flagged comments to get the statistics of the false positives and negatives of the flagging step. Now, with this procedure, there's a problem though. We cannot simply calculate a binomial proportion confidence interval because we have several convolved sources of uncertainty that comes from the random sampling, flagging, and another sampling for the human annotation. The solution technique here is bootstrap resampling. We will save the details of the statistics for this paper, but here is the intuition for how bootstrapping works. Intuitively, a bootstrap uses resampling with replacement to create a large number of parallel universes. So what we do is we calculate the probability of a flagged comment to be violating and then the probability of a non-flagged comment to be violating. So the rate of true positives and false negatives of our system. And we combine them to run a thousand bootstrap resampling, each with the same number of comments as the original data set, but each universe will have a slightly different number of norm-violating comments due to the resampling with replacement. And it is the variation across many parallel universes that gives us the robustness and uncertainty confidence intervals on our estimates. So let me break down our results in a little more detail and highlight a few numbers. 6.25% of all comments in 2016 to 17 and 4.28% in 2020 to 21 are norm violations. And this difference is significantly, significantly different according to the permutation test. So this does suggest that things got a little bit better, but the number is still essentially around 5%. Personal attacks were the most prevalent form of norm violation. And pornography and bigotry were the most likely to be moderated, while politically inflammatory comments and misogyny were less likely. Here is our interpretation of these results. First, recall that in 2020, we saw the Facebook transparency report suggesting that 0.1% of its content is being categorized as hate speech. And that raised concerns as it translates to affecting millions of users. 5% of known violation, we argue, is a lot. So what this feels like to us is that we can't just point the finger at moderators and we can't just agitate for marginally better tools. Antisocial behavior is orders of magnitude too omnipresent for that. So if you were to take away one interpretation of our, of our results in this talk, I think it should be that we have the need for massive shifts in how we envision social platforms. Can we look beyond social media's predominant role as a public square to one where reachability can coexist with a stronger sense of shared norms? So I'm excited to see where these conversations will go. And with that, thank you everyone for your time.